Let us now learn how to find the average velocity for uniform circular motion. The word uniform tells us that the linear speed is constant. It also tells us that the angular speed is constant. Because the linear speed is constant, the angular speed will be constant. So when you are talking about uniform circular motion, we are talking about an object moving with constant linear speed v and a constant angular speed omega. So what will be the linear speed? Radius is r. So you can say it is r omega. But as the particle moves, the direction of the velocity will keep changing. So you can see the velocity vector changes. The speed remains constant. The question is, what is the distance travelled? Well, the distance travelled is equal to speed into time. So, L is equal to speed into time because the speed is constant. Of course, you can also write that this arc length, which is the distance travelled, is r theta. If I knew theta, what is theta? Theta is omega into t because omega is constant. So, theta is omega into t. So, I can write L as r theta, which is r omega t. Of course, you knew that v equals r omega. So, if I put that v equals r omega here, that also gives me r omega t. So, now we are talking about distance. We are talking about the linear speed. We are talking about the angle turn. But if I want to talk about average velocity, I need the displacement. Displacement is the vector from the starting point to the ending point. right? And average velocity is displacement by time. So, if I am looking at the magnitude of the average velocity, then I am looking at the length of this chord. We already know that the average velocity magnitude, which is the chord length by time, is less than the arc length by time, which is the speed. So, average velocity magnitude s by t is less than the speed v. So, we know this. But this is only giving me an inequality. So, does this mean that I cannot find the average velocity exactly? No, we can. Let us look at how to do that. Because to do that, you just have to recognize that this is an isosceles triangle. Why? Because this is also r. This is r, this is r. So, this is an isosceles triangle. And for an isosceles triangle, if I drop a perpendicular, it is also the angle bisector. So, that means this was theta. So, this will be theta by 2, that will be theta by 2. Right? It splits up these two as two theta by 2s. Theta by 2, theta by 2. Now, this is a right angle triangle. This is the hypotenuse. r is the hypotenuse. This angle is theta by 2. So, what about this? r cos theta by 2 will be this dotted blue line. And r sin theta by 2 will be this. So, this will be r sin theta by 2. r sin theta by 2. What about the displacement magnitude s? Well, it will be twice of this, no? Because this will also be r sin theta by 2. So, we can say s is 2 times r sin theta by 2. Till here, it is very simple and straightforward. From here, we can immediately figure out what is the average velocity magnitude. Direction, of course, we know it is the direction of the displacement, so that we do not need to write separately. It is the displacement magnitude by time. This is the displacement magnitude. So, 2 r sin theta by 2 by t. I can stop here, but I can also look at this and say t is theta by omega. So, if I substitute for t theta by omega, I can rewrite this as 2 r sin theta by 2 by theta by omega. Now, this omega goes up. It will become r omega. Instead of leaving it there, I will bring the 2 down. Why? Because you see, theta by 2 is here. So, it will be nice if this is also theta by 2. So, what I am going to do is I am going to take the omega up and I am going to bring the 2 down. So, then I can rewrite it as r omega into sin theta by 2 by theta by 2. You see that there is a nice symmetry here. What is r omega? Ah, that is the instantaneous linear speed, v. So, v times sin theta by 2 by theta by 2. So, we have found the average velocity magnitude in terms of v, v times sin theta by 2 by theta by 2. And what is theta? Omega t. So, if you knew omega and t, you can substitute omega and t there and you can get the answer. Now, do you need to remember this? Absolutely not. Please do not remember this formula. Instead, remember that whenever you need, you can always find the chord length by dropping a perpendicular. It's an isosceles triangle. So, drop a perpendicular and you can find out that using Pythagoras theorem, r sin theta by 2, 2 times that gives you the chord length and then chord length divided by time will give you the average velocity magnitude. So, always derive it from the basics. You will find that that is going to be a lot easier than remembering something like this.